My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 51. Day number 51 out of the third edition, hence 3051. We are on page number 256. We're going to do the example that you see there in the book, 2.8.6, which deals with a very simple, very straightforward concept, a concept of equation of a circle. What, how do we write equation of a circle in a standard form? I hope you know it. It's very straightforward. There are some things that we have to know. Equation of a circle written in a standard form looks like this x minus a square x minus a whole squared plus y minus b whole squared equals r squared where a and b represent where a and b represent the coordinates of the center of the circle where the center is represented by coordinates a and b where center is this that's the center of the circle, that's what A and B represent, and R here is simply the radius. That's how simple it, simple it is. The, the one that they give us, the example that they give us in the book looks something like this. Let's see what we can do here. So let's call it part A. There are two examples that they give in the book, we're going to do four, two more, so we're going to do four all together, A, B, C, and D. This is what they give us, X squared plus y squared, they tell us, is equal to 100. Well, that's quite straightforward then. There is no a and there is no b, which means a and b are 0. a and b are 0, which means the center of this circle, which means the center of this circle is 0, 0. It's sitting at the origin. It is sitting at the origin. That's the center of the circle. And we are further told that r squared is 100, which means the radius of the circle is 10. That's all. So here we go. 5, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10. And let's hope that I can do a decent job of plotting a nice circle because sometimes it comes out looking pretty ugly. We'll see what we can do. I'm not going to replot it because that's about the best that I'm going to get. That's your circle. Let's do one more, shall we? The second one they give us is x minus 6 whole squared plus y plus 5 whole squared equals 9. Now here, again, that 9, don't, re don't read that 9 as a 9, read that 9 as 3 squared. Just like here, don't read that 100 as a 100, that 100 is actually 10 squared, which is why the center is 10. So, rather, the radius was 10. Here, the radius is 3. The center is going to be you have to remember that it's x minus a, six mi x minus 6 here, so 6 is positive 6. The x coordinate of the center is positive 6, but the y coordinate of the center is negative 5. It's negative 5, because that y minus 5 that you see there, that y, rather, that y plus 5 that we see there, in reality, we should re look at it as y minus a minus 5. And hence, this is the y coordinate. You see, it has to be written as y minus b. y minus b. y, y minus b. Our b is negative 5. So we have a center of positive 6 and a negative 5. Positive 6 will be somewhere here. And a negative 5 looks like center is right about here. Of this circle, let me put it in a different color because it's a different circle. And the radius of, th and the radius of 3, I'm just going to do it freehand here, looks something like this. It's a small circle with a radius of only 3, and it's going to intersect here and here, obviously. And that's the picture that you see where they're talking about figure 8. Figure 8 on that page, page number 256. And that was the end of it. That's about it. There is not much there. That's what they're doing there. Let's do two more, shall we? Let's do two more. We're going to do it on the top here because we need the room. I'm going to erase all this thing, we don't, we, or maybe we should keep it. C. 
it's not in the book, you understand? So here's part C. It says x plus 4 whole squared. Right away we know that x coordinate of the center is negative 4. Because this x plus 4 should be read as x minus a negative 4. Read it like this. Plus y plus 3 whole squared. Again, read that as y minus a negative 3 whole squared. So center is going to be negative 4 and negative 3 and we are told it is equal to 289. It is getting way too crowded. I'm going to erase most of this stuff because it's getting too crowded as I said. We don't need this. We don't need this picture. We we'll need that. There we go. Let me put this a little bit lower. There is your, this quantity is being squared and this is equal to 289. Now the tricky part is, what about 289? Is that a perfect square? Let's find out, shall we? You have to know your squares. You have to know your squares by heart 1 through 20. 1 through 20. Or at the very least, 1 through 10 for sure or 1 through 15. But you have to know your squares. Do you understand? We know 15 squared. We know 15 squared is 225. And if you don't know it, I hope that you do. 15 squared is 225. How do, you, how do you know 15 squared is 225? It's very simple. 15 times 15. 15 times 10 is 150. If 15 times 10 is 150, then 15 times 5 should be half of 150, which is 75. 150 plus 75 is 225. Do you understand? 16 squared. 16 squared is 256. The question is, I wonder what 17 squared is going to be. Do you wonder that? I wonder that. Notice 17 times 17, if you were to multiply 17 by 17, the unit digit should be 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 9. Hey, what do you know? Let's find out what 17 squared is, shall we? 17 times 17, we're going to find out. Let's find out what that is. 17 times 17, shall we? Let's do it together. 10 times 10 is 100. Let's do it over here. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 7 is going to be 49. And then we have another 10 times 7, which is another 49. Oh. 10 times, this is 10 times 7. 10 times 7 is not 49. Let me start again. I was doing 7 times 7 in my mind. 17 times 17 is what we are doing here. Okay, here we go. This is 10 times 10, which is 100. Then we're going to have 10 times 7, which is going to be 70. And then we're going to have other 10 times 7. Here we go. 10 times 7 here, which is going to be another 70. And then 7 times 7, which is going to be 49. So 100, 240, 100, 140, that's 240 plus 49 is 289. And if you don't like all of this thing, just do it out. Just multiply it out and you will see that it is 249, uh, 289. You see, 100. Let's do one more time. I'm going to do it with a different color so we can follow it. 17 times 17. You see? This this 10, this 1 here is not a 1, it's a 10 digit. It's a 10 digit. This is a 10 digit. So if you multiply those two out, it's 10 times 10, that's 100. Now we go to 10 times 7, that's the 70. Now we have to take this 7. Now we have to take this 7 and do the same thing. This, this one here, this one here is not a 1, it's a 10. So the 7 times 10, it gives you another 70. And then finally, 7 times 7 gives you 49. That's where I was getting it. So 70 plus 70 is 140. 140 plus 100 is 240. And 240 and 49 is going to be 289. 7, seven sevens are, seven sevens are 49. Let me put my cap back on before I, before I do. 7, 7 is a 49, 9, well you get the idea, it's, two, it's 289, so this here is 17 squared, there we go, there is your circle, so what do we know about this particular circle, we know the center is going to be negative 4 and negative 3, the center of this circle is negative 4 and negative 3, and the radius of this circle, radius of this circle is exactly 17. Because it just happens to be 
perfect square. 289 happens to be a perfect square, but it doesn't have to be. It's not always obviously given as a perfect square. Let's take a, let's, let's take a look, look at one more example where we'll see that it will not be a perfect square. Where can we do it? Let's squeeze, let's squeeze right here. The last one, it says x minus 7 all squared, which means that since it's minus 7, the x coordinate of the center is positive 7. Plus y plus 6 all squared, which means the y coordinate of the center is going to be negative 6. So let's make a note of it. The center of this circle is going to be positive 7 and a negative 6. And we are told equals 20. Well, that's the problem. 20 is not a perfect square. So how do we write that as perfect square? It's very simple. If a quantity is given to us that is not a perfect square, like 20, which is not a perfect square, and we want to write that as a perfect square, we want to write that as a squared quantity, not a perfect square, rather. We cannot make something into a perfect square if it's not, but we can represent that as a squared quantity. And how do we do that? It's very simple. Take a square root of it, and then square it. Voila. It is still 20, because when you take a square root of something and then you square the quant result, you're, you're undoing what you're doing. Taking a square root and taking the square of a quantity is the same thing as ad the adding and subtracting. If you have a quantity and if you add 5 to it and then you subtract 5 from it, you end up with the original quantity. If you have a quantity and you multiply it by 7 and then you divide the result by 7, division and multiplication, they undo each other. Similarly, taking a square root of a quantity and then squaring the result it's the same thing. Or squaring a result and then taking the square root, the, the, squaring a quantity and then taking the square root of the result, they undo each other. Which means we're back to 20. But now we have it, now we have it written in the form of a squared quantity, which tells us the radius of the circle is, which tells us that the radius of this particular circle is equal to the square root of 20. There you have it. And that's all there was. As I said, the last two that we did C and D, they are not in the book. I just didn't want to do two of the examples, so we did two more. In the next video, in the next lesson, we'll go to the next page, page number 257, where we'll talk about, where we will talk about intersection, how to find the point of intersection of a line, a straight line, and a parabola. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. If you're interested in working with me, if you would like to hire my services, if you, if you would like me to tutor you, to help you get uh, uh, get ready for the GRE, you can get hold of me by sending me an email at prepacity@aol.com, or simply calling me at 1-800-808-7737 or 1-800-808-PREP, and I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is that I can do to help you. Do you understand? Bye now.